welcome everyone. Welcome to the uh, webinar Profibus Network Failure Diagnosis and Troubleshooting conducted by Uthunga and South, uh, ISS South India section uh, collaborating together. Uh, we are thankful to ISS South India section. I am Samir uh, from Uthunga. I take care of marketing at Uthunga. And uh, here is the presentation today. Uh, we have two speakers for the day, uh, Guru Kiran and um, uh, Angad. Uh, they are going to take you through the presentation. Now I uh, request Jaharan sir to take up the presentation and start the uh, in, you know, starting slides. Jaharan sir, please. Uh, Guru, please uh, control the uh, presentation for sir. Thank you. Thank you, Samir. It was a great uh, introduction. Uh, I, I, I warm welcome to every one of you. We have an interesting uh, webinar, Profibus Network Failure and uh, Diagnostics and Troubleshooting uh, by uh, Guru Kiran and Angered Lambert of uh, Utunga Technologies. So my name is Jay Haran. I am the secretary of ISS section. And I also have Mr. Uh, uh, Sai Ramesh with me, who is the president of ISS section. We will be uh, uh, gliding you through the uh, introduction about ISA and uh, what are the benefits of joining ISA. Uh, we will be introducing our uh, speakers for the day. Before we start with uh, uh, what it is all about, it's basic digital communication between your sensors and LCs and you can to scare systems. So the digital communication, which is becoming very popular nowadays uh, out of the uh, bus architecture and uh, if you take profit bus it's basically a standard 485 we call it as rs485 bus it's an enhanced version of rs485 bus you can say where uh, it's a it's a multi-top environment and uh, there are very specific uh, cable uh, cabling requirements to be followed impedance requirements to be followed and uh, uh, the 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 pros that are the, those are the pros of uh, profibus. If it takes the cons of profibus, the speed reduces over the length. So as and when you have a higher length of uh, profibus network, you really have to compromise on the speed. So some of the niche uh, things uh, which uh, Utunga is doing is like they will uh, they will uh, tell in this presentation what is what would be the recommended cable length, what is the recommended mm -hmm. impedance how to troubleshoot all the uh, bus related problems and things like uh, uh, how to how to have the better uh, profibus uh, cabling laid monitored and controlled so that that will be the flow of the presentation today and uh, if you take utunga technologies it's a technology company and uh, basically uh, started by mr krishnan who comes from an amazon uh, background and it's a it's a very unique company uh, focusing on cutting edge technologies and automation and it's a totally an automation company i would say where uh, they develop a lot of uh, uh, protocols uh, related to opc ua they have their own iot platform called javelin platform and uh, they have a cut of a couple of uh, edge devices which can uh, convert modbus to uh, different cloud pro protocols and uh, populate your uh, different, uh, sensor signal to, to Javelin platform and do cloud uh, data analytics, things like that. That's a brief about uh, Utunga. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? We are today in a different platform. Today we are experimenting with the Zoho uh, meeting platform. And so uh, we, have, we have muted every one of you. So in case if you have any questions, please raise your hand so that uh, uh, the organizers can unmute you and you can put forward your questions and in all the presentations stop your video and uh, follow the presenter flow and reserve your questions at the end uh, so in case of any questions please raise your hand unmute uh, we will uh, we'll unmute you during the question answer session and uh, you can mute once the question is complete so that's, uh, that's the ground rules we have to follow this webinar next slide please This is about the introduction about uh, ISA. I request uh, Mr. Sai Ramesh to take it forward. <clears throat> okay, good morning, uh, everyone, and welcome to this um, uh, unique uh, uh, presentation uh, in terms of um, uh, diagnosing uh, the networks of uh, Profibus and trying to see how it can be uh, troubleshooted. 
uh, this is one of the main requirements today in industrial automation where uh, most of the networks are being uh, employed by everyone every uh, automation professional and this uh, will uh, definitely give uh, us uh, good insight on what we should do in terms of uh, we have some issues in terms of networks and it's um, uh, uh, how to troubleshoot it and how to diagnose it and this uh, may help us in future other networks also because the fundamentals are going to be same we will try to see how um, uh, utunga technologies is going to present it to uh, the everyone in terms of isa we have uh, uh, good uh, in terms of a contribution to the international automation society automation professionals and control and automation professionals and basically we see that uh, we uh, develop technologies to help uh, people automation professionals to ensure that the operational excellence is uh, uh, driven next step. why isa because there are a lot of uh, people who are going on asking why uh, we should join isa what is the benefit of isa and uh, what is isa there are two things which we should uh, understand uh, why we should join isa it's a professional organization started in 1945 and uh, the main purpose of it is uh, basically objectives standards education certification and then uh, publications and a lot of conferences and exhibits there are 36000 people 350000 customers around the world next uh its headquarters in uh, alexander drive uh, research triangle park in us next please and uh, uh, this uh, isa is uh, constituting uh, of various uh, districts and uh, we are coming under india is coming under district 14 isa south india is coming under india and uh, d14 consists of uh, basically sri lanka bangladesh myanmar malaysia singapore vietnam indonesia korea and uh, china japan and china uh in india we have uh, various sections and then uh, you can see eight sections today and then uh, south india is one of the premier uh, old uh, sections next please uh okay uh, the structure of is is uh, directly an executive board uh, who are elected by the people and then uh, they give the direction uh, for the others to work uh, the operation staff are 125 and geographical assembly it's basically consists of two things one is geographical assembly which is basically district section and student sections and uh, technical divisions these are all administered by uh, the executive board so district president section president student presidents they elect the leaders for the executive board uh, as well as the geographical assembly yeah and technical divisions you have plenty of information in uh, it has been defined as two automation technology department industries and science department you will see in the next slide next please uh you can see uh, automation and technology department uh, has analysis uh, automate uh, i mean automatic controls and robotic communication management process measurement and control safety and security division test and measurements smart manufacturing and iot all these latest topics are coming inside this uh, automation and there are uh, something else the industries and science department gives lot of other impetus on um, aerospace building automation i mean other uh, fundamental things like uh, mining uh, especially construction uh, in, uh, design division basically all epc companies can be in the construction and de uh, design division so what is the benefit uh, of uh, being uh, in the isa and the world of automation so basically you can see uh, industry needs a lot of things uh, you can see that in that and um, to increase operational excellence and productivity isa has to provide solutions that's what is happening between 
for example uh, skilled workforce uh, is the requirement of the industry but whereas uh, isa gives a lot of certified programs and training and similarly skill assessment uh, there is a big uh, requirement of um, industry to see whether uh, skill can be assessed so isa professions are uh, there to provide you the certificates etc uh, one assessing the uh, uh, individuals in terms of their skills then best practices where you have all the uh, standards and other things can be given and then continuing education as well as papers and in terms of uh, operation excellence you can see standards uh, 150 or the industrial standards are there and uh, now uh, it is becoming joined together with iec we are now bringing down all the standards into one platform so that world can use one standard which means basically you are going to have increased productivity operation expect so members select their leaders in headquarters that's what we told all you so now you have to i mean who who are all the members if they are the members please uh, you can uh, uh, cast your vote to the leaders you can select your own leaders in the headquarters who will represent you next uh, so uh, why join isa we, we said uh, for the industry uh, common remaining uh, current with technology because every uh, latest technology is being discussed and lot of people are representing uh, uh, i mean working together with the isa to produce the latest uh, technology implementation into the system then lot of leadership opportunities you you can uh, represent or you can become a leader in uh, isa and a lot of industrial professionals are networked so you will have anything which you wanted to get clarified you can put it into your division or into any of the contacts you will get the response and business opportunities for the people the young entrepreneurs on their own they can go ahead uh, and look at it uh, there are opportunities there students you have internship placements and leadership uh, opportunities faculty members actually they can do lot of research and uh, industrial contact is already there next page Uh, ISA South India is uh, one of the one of the oldest uh, sections. Like I said, uh, more than 28 years, and uh, both uh, academicians as well as industrial uh, people are there uh, joining together to bring up bring this society. And uh, uh, there are four doctorates in instrumentation engineering, and uh, you can see lot of industrial professionals. and uh, it and ot domain space specialists also there and uh, rich experience and young workforce uh, work together to, uh, to see that uh, the the uh, latest requirements of the young engineers are being addressed properly and in addition you can see that um, isa south india has a unique opportunity of uh, bringing down bringing up uh, their uh, people Uh, a lot of people have got uh, the awards as such next please student sections uh, i've got uh, many awards um, uh, we are trying to see uh, uh, the best what we can do and uh, we are trying to organize uh, the latest technological topics and uh, you can also see that e certificates are mailed at the end of the session and um, you can see the whom server we select uh, they are uh, really subject matter experts and uh, it is not only in india it is uh, around uh, the world in us or any other place last time we had uh, uh, mr vijay talking from the us and then we had uh, uh, others from talking from uh, japan and other places so we 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 have that flexibility today because of uh, Uh, the remote uh, uh, working together uh, due to covid and it helps us also to utilize the technology which were there earlier also but uh, uh, to the common uh, cause i leave it to jaharan 
Jayaram, please. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, my slide. My slide, please. Next slide. Uh, I have the privilege to introduce the speakers of uh, today. Uh, Guru Kiran, who is the client partner in Industrial Solutions, and Angad Lambert, who is the industrial network expert. So we have a person from sales and we have a person from uh, technology. So any question able to bombard with your and with you with answers. Guru has a proven experience working with. Uh, business, uh, framework in industrial automation uh, manufacturing domain. He has expertise in both uh, Profibus and Profinet and a key partner in practical application that he supports customers in all areas from planning, commissioning, maintenance and troubleshooting of industrial networks. That's about Guru. And Anger is again a, a Profibus or Profinet expert having substantial domain knowledge in process industry. His proficiency in Profinet and Profibus enable him to design p &ID architecture uh, perform comprehensive network diagnosis, uh, network acceptance in entity testing and certification. Angert Anger has uh, hands-on experience in the diagnostic tools of Indusol GmbH, Siemens product, and device integration using Semantic Manager. So that's about our speakers. Welcome uh, uh, both of you. Uh, being the young speakers, I, I, we are, our expectations are quite high. So. <laughs> Yes. Take this uh, <laughs> forward and uh, make it a success. Thank you very much. Over to you, Guru and uh, Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good morning, everyone. Guru, can we start? Okay. Yeah. I'm on to right? Fine. So, our agenda for I am Ankar. So, I'm first I'm going through the basics, and the second part, Guru will be taking over. So, Agenda for the first section is we will be going through what is the exact basics of Profibus technology and what are the like standards, commissioning standards, and what are the PA standards that has to be maintained in the network and what is the physical problems and logical problems in the network, what we are facing. That is the first part. And the second part comes to how we can troubleshoot the network using our unique tools and how you can resolve the problems. So without any delay, I will move. Can you move to next slide, Guru? So we are Uttunga Technologies. So this is just brief of our company profile. So we are our main uh, R&D is from Bangalore and we have a sales organization in USA, Germany, and Japan. And we have a two departments, one is in services and other is in solutions. What services this is, we support OEMs like Honeywell, Siemens, Yokogawa for developing, for example, if you have a gas flow meter, we develop the apps. So if we have a uh, something temperature transmitter, we have we develop some firmwares, such kind of services we does in one department. In the solutions, we undertake the complete automation projects and we have a our own IoT platform and the third is we have the network diagnostic solutions that is very unique we can start from the l4 l4 layer and we have finder plus professionals and i also certify company and been serving the customers for more than 12 years can you move to next slide so utunga been partnered for with indusol Indusol is a German company. As I explained, Indusol is the OEM for the diagnostic tools. What Indusol agenda is to control the networks and find where the exact weakness is and to uh, like give more availability to the production plans. Like there should not be any production failures in the network. So that is their main agenda. That's why we have been partnered with Indusol for more than two years and we have been serving Indian customers to troubleshoot and find what is the exact issue in the plant. Can you move to next? So these are our quite industrial associations. As Darren sir already said, we have been working with OPC foundations. You can see PICC, that is Profibus and Profinet, IO Link, Portfolio, Ethernet IP. These are our non-funding organizations. We have been partnered and even we are developing and supporting each group. Next. So 
I will come to the our main topic, Profibus and Profinet. Profibus and Profinet is a Siemens proprietary protocol. So they have a organization, PI, Profibus and Profinet International. So in PI has authorized Utunga as PI like PICC, we are the PICC, Profibus and Profinet Competence Center. What Competence Center does is Competence Center can share knowledge and do trainings to the industries and educate the maintenance guys to do the correct commissioning and make the network as per standards. So PACC has a different kind of organization. You can see in the bottom layer, you can see PIPC, that is a training center and PIPL, that is a test lab, test laboratories. Test laboratories means if I develop a Profibus device, I have to certify whether this is as per standard. So I have to give to this test lab and get certified. Otherwise, uh, this cannot be sold in the market. So these, guy, these are the three divisions uh, undertaken by Profibus and Profinet International. Next. So our topic for today in the basic layer, we are we will be going through the what is Profibus protocol and what is the address range and how the communication is working in Profibus and what is the signal, what is this, how is the signal looks like and what are the standards you need to maintain and why terminations and impedance is relevant in the network. So we'll, we'll move to the topic. So what is Profibus? Profibus is process field binary unit system. In Profibus itself, we have two types DP and PA. DP means decentralized peripheral. That means actually centralized automation devices to decentralized field devices. That is a new technology came into the market and we have two types. Another is PA, process automation. Process automation usually uses in where uh, if you need some intrinsic safety, usually if you go to the oil field or if you go to some uh, very explosive areas, we use process automation. But these two have a different technology comparing to Profibus DP, it has a RS485 technology, while Profibus PA has a MBPIS, that is Manchester Bus Powered Intrinsic Safety Technology. So you can see the two types of cables. Oh, can you go to the two types of cables? In the violet color cable is the Profibus DP, and the black color cable is the Profibus PA. The comparing the baud rate also, PA it has a maximum baud rate up to 35.2 kilobits per second. While comparing Profibus, DP has a maximum baud rate to 12 Mbps. And the principle behind the communication is master-slave communication. You can see the master on the right side and the slave, slave they are communicating. Master is the active, active device in the network, while slave is the passive device in the network. The main principle is there will be only one message at a time. It is a unicast. If you compare Ethernet or Profinet, that is broadcast. Profibus is always unicast. Only one message can be drafted at a particular time. That's why we say master-slave communication. So master is the active device, that is your PLC, and slave is your passive device. Can we go to the next slide? So if you go to different type of masters, we have master class one and master class two. Master class one basically is your PLC, which does the cyclic communication. Cyclic communication means PLC will be, PLC will be having an internal cycle. So in this internal cycle, it will be communicating to the nodes attached. While master class two is your PC or any diagnostic device, where you do the parameterization or any diagnostic activities or if you want to configure some of the new nodes we use the master class two. these are the two types of master in the profibus network can you go to the next slide? so this is just in that what is the osi model of profibus maybe this is actually the beginning of profi net actually from here Profibus is transferred to Profinet after developing this kind of OSI model. So this is the basic OSI model for the Profibus. You can see the physical layer. Physical layer, physical layer means what is the transmission technology? That is RS485. 
and the data link layer that is what is the principle behind the profibus communication that is master slave communication and if you see the application layer there are three types of application layer in profibus db that is dpv0 dpv1 and dpv2 dpv0 means it is cyclic communication dpv1 means acyclic communication and dpv2 is if you want a time stamping or if you want to do a synchronous communication we use dpv2 cyclic communication means plc dpv0 used in the plc to the slaves plc to the slaves communication dpv0 is acting while dpv1 is acting when master class 2 master class 2 means your pc your semantic pc is communicating to your plc that is acyclic communication while dpv2 is used whenever if you require a very time synchronous communication if you go to a robotic plant that your uh, communication should be in microsecond then profibus communication will not work properly because profibus communication it only one telegram at a time so we need a broadcast type of communication here in that particular time we use dpv2 dpv2 is a synchronous type of application profile which can be activated from your uh, plc or your programming devices guru next can so we will go to the profibus dp address ranges what is the maximum address range as we or maybe all some of you know what is the address range 0 to 127 is the defined address range but zero most commonly we don't use zero and one to two is the masters usually two we assign for the master if it is a siemens master usually we assign for two and three to 125 is the slave addresses while 126 and 127 126 is a default address we don't use 126 it is only for the manufacturer while 127 is used for broadcasting broadcasting means if you want to broadcast a particular message to a particular nodes we use 127 as i earlier explained if you have a robotic plant or if you have a cranes with four motors running in a very microsecond so if you want to broadcast a particular message to four nodes at a particular time we use 127 that you have to program it and use that in a dpv2 so maximum nodes that you can communicate in a single master is 124. Next video. So we'll look into the how profibus communication works. It is a two-way communication. There will be a master and you can see the number of nodes. You can see the communication, how it is happening. Slave is responding back. In the left side corner, you can see uh, master is requesting the data from slave number 10. And slave number 10 is responding back to master. This is how the communication is happening. Only one packet is passed at a particular time. That is why master is always an active device. Since master is taking the action in the network, master is, uh, master is asking, uh, what, is the, what is the input? What is the output? Then the slave is uh, responding, this is my data. That's why the cycle cycle goes on. Next. So we look into the how the signal looks. The physical layer of Profibus is RS485, which is a two-way communication. And Profibus signal consists of a differential voltage. Can you put next, Guru? Next. One more next. Yeah, so signal A consists of 2.5 volt, signal B consists of minus 2.5 volt. So then since profibus communication is a differential voltage, you can see the total signal will be in a 5 voltage. So voltage is always dependent on the data transmission, like data is always passed through the voltage, right? So if there is any voltage fluctuation, data will be having some corruption or you will the, the original data will not be received by the master or slave so if you look one of the standard the pi recommends pi always recommended like 
voltage in profibus nodes should be greater than 2.2 volt always and the slope must be less than 5 by 16 then you will be having a doubt what is slope slope is actually you can see the square square wave the profibus coding is non return zero non return zero that is why it is a square wave so if you see the square wave this square wave is divided into 16 splits 16 splits you can see the 16 splits and the 8 by 16 part is consider to interpret whether it is a logic logical zero or one according to that it works like zero one zero one it is a binary unit communication right so that's why pa recommended slope should be less than 5 by 16 that is zero to one transition time zero to one transition time should not be any delay if there is a delay there is a problem in your network that's what we understand from the analysis can you go to next so we'll go to the com some communication standards topology in profibus is a line structure is a daisy chain and since it is a rs485 communication you cannot extend more than 32 stations in a single network because an uh, it is energy will be reduced gradually only 32 devices can communicate in a single segment profibus master can communicate up to 120 125 devices 127 devices but since it is a rs485 energy has to be like pushed using repeaters so in a segment you can only communicate up to 32 stations after that you have to put repeaters to enhance the voltage then only you will get a good voltage in each layer each slave and each complete network and we have 10 transmission speeds you can see 12 mbps 6 mbps 3 mbps and up to 9.6 kilobits so this transmission speed is always dependent on the length of the cable if you see 1.5 mbps maximum cable length you can extend is to 200 if you see 12 mbps maximum speed is 100 what will happen if you extend more than that if for example if i consider 1.5 mbps and i extended up to 220 meter the last nodes connected uh, before 220 meter or last to 220 meter will be having a delay in responding back to the master this will create intermittent failures for example if it is your drive this drive will not be responding as requested so what will happen if drive not responds the conveyor will stop or if your pressing machine will stop intermittently not for a complete shutdown maybe 2 minutes they will stop and again they will restart this will happen if you don't follow these particular standards that's why we recommend to follow standards as recommended by pa next so uh, what is impedance and terminations impedance and termination so we uh, impedance of profibus cable is 150 ohms and if you say why terminations are important in the network maybe uh, we actually uh, myself will be i will i was visiting a lot of plants and they we understood like terminations was not at all in proper in many networks then we understood we need to educate the maintenance team why termination is important in the network terminations should be at the end of the segment and start of the network start of the network and end of the network you can see this is a profibus connector sub d9 connector and inside the sub d9 connector there are three resistance 390 220 390 which will give you an output of 175 ohms so this 175 ohms is uh, what uh, grounding the energy flowing in the profibus cable that means in profibus cable rs485 this 150 ohms is impedance this energy is flowing if there is no proper grounding what will happen reflections will be there in the network that is a simple physics if energy is flowing reflections will be there in the network this reflections will cause for your data errors your logical errors your data will be corrupted 
so these reflections can be avoided with proper terminations at end of the segments these terminations like in in the d9 connector you can see this resistance this resistance will like give an output of 175 ohms and this 175 ohms will completely ground the energy flowing in the network that's why we recommend to do proper terminations at the start of the segment and end of the segment then your network will be in a proper stable way without any reflections so that's why impedance and terminations are always dependent and you need to check whether your cable impedance is as per standard 150 ohms or not if you see a canvas cable canvas is almost uh, similar color violet color but the impedance is almost 110 110 to 120 ohms if you put a canvas cable over profibus cable what will happen your communication will get interrupted interrupted due to reflections in the network so we recommend to use profibus twisted wire cables and use the do the terminations as per standard start of the segment and end of the segment next so these were the particular standards what we have explained now we will just go through the what is the real issues in the profi bus in the come considering the profi bus major issue comes from the physical layer if you go to the cable connectors or if you go to the standards emcs these kind of lot of issues are there in the profi bus in particularly in india because in india profi bus is very aged most of the plants are seven to eight years using profi bus network so their cables are very having a huge wear and tear and their shielding is not perfect these are our physical issues logical issues are very less comparing logical issues means if you have some of your nodes having some errors if your nodes having some backplane error or if you are having some uh, if you are adding some now a number of nodes are more in the network these kind of uh, logical errors are quite error in the quite less in the profibus network but physical parameters are always dependent on the logical parameters if you consider for example if you consider if you don't follow one shielding in your network as per proper this will affect to logical issue in the network because if you don't do a shielding as per standard then what happen your leakage current will increase in the network leakage current means a lot of noises will come in the network this will increases the reflections then the reflections will cause in the data transmission so gradually it will affect for the intermittent failures and logical errors can we move to the next so these are the few physical problems what we have analyzed by visiting a lot of plants and understanding what is the exact requirement you can see shielding shielding as i mentioned shielding is very relevant and should be done properly as here you can see this is our profibus connector and you can see there will be a metal contact here this metal contact should touch the shield as per properly then only you will get a proper grounding if proper grounding is not there it will gradually affect as i mentioned for the intermittent failures and all missing or faulty terminations if you look into the terminations as i mentioned earlier terminations and impedance are very like uh, they are in a same plane so if you don't do a terminations what will happen reflections will increase in the network these reflections will cause for intermittent failures third thing exceeded cable length according to baud rate for example if you are using 12 mbps speed and you are exceeding the cable length more than 100 you are exceeding to 150 meter as i mentioned there will be a delay in the network so these are particular standard since it is a rs485 technology you have to follow this standard to undergo a proper communication short circuit how short circuit comes if you go through the a and b cable in some of the connectors you can see they strip the a and b and usually if there is a vibration the a and b touches this creates a short circuit in the profibus profibus cables and exceeded number of nodes 
as we discussed 125 134 is the maximum number of nodes that can be connected to profibus master and number of slaves that can communicate in a particular segment is 32 if you exceed above that what will happen it will communicate it will communicate but gradually you will have a intermittent failure for one uh, one case i can say when i went to one of the plant they connected almost 45 devices to their one of the master in a single segment so what happened actually their system was running fine for a six months no issues but weekly weekly they are having some failures weekly like their conveyors are stopping uh, intermittently they don't they don't understand what is happening then after our analyzing we understood the node numbers was more in a single segment so proper segmentation has to be taken out then wrong type of cables as discussed this is the profibus cable twisted wire cable with 150 ohms that is the standard pa recommended standard improper segmentation improper segmentation as we discussed earlier like if you having a more than 32 nodes you have to segment it properly otherwise your network will go for a delay and the data transmission will be delayed gradually your conveyors or any pressing machines will be having a failure intermittent failures then the last one is electromagnetic interference electromagnetic interference is a like permanent or transient alteration in the electrical signal if you see the electrical field is generated by a simple voltage difference while magnetic field is uh, generated usually by the small current difference so now in, if you go to your plant you can see a lot of high power consumption devices are the drives are the schematic uh, drives or if you go to any controllers so this will be having a lot of uh, current fluctuations and voltage fluctuations so you need to do proper segmentations and if you consider a power cable power cable will be going along with profibus cable this is not recommended power cables should be always like 30 centimeter beyond 30 centimeter away away from the profibus cable that is standard so these are particular standard need to avoid the emi emi also can be found out and analyzed so these are the quite physical problems which will generate particular logical problems in your network next guru so we will uh, just go through the logical problems just i mentioned what are the physical problems these are quite logical problems what we have to see can you put next guru so here you have seen master is requesting slave number 10 the data like master is asking how are you to the slave number 10 but that data uh, slave is not responding back as mentioned as uh, as requested then what will master do master will again ask how are you because master is not receiving a particular response that is a deviation that like that is a deviation in the profibus network you can see that is the repeat telegram what we call that is an error that is a repeat telegram repeat telegram is nothing if a bus device doesn't respond after a predefined time like master is asking to resend again the or request again what is the information of the io device what is error telegram error telegram is a faulty telegram like message is corrupted as i mentioned if you do the shielding in a wrong way if you do if you don't do the segmentation as per standard if you don't consider profibus like uh, profibus nodes standard like 32 in a segment and 125 in a complete network this can all lead to error telegram what are the type of error telegram if you go to the coding technology you can see parity error like zero one is changed to one zero these kind of errors will come to the data thus your slaves will not respond as per as requested what is diagnostic telegram diagnostic telegram is purely dependent on the nodes nodes of your devices nodes slaves your slaves you can see 10 31 12 13 these are the slaves so diagnostic telegram is dependent on your slaves what is diagnostic telegram there is two type of diagnostic telegram like external diagnostics and internal diagnostics 
if your slave is having an internal wire break or if you are having a sensor wire break that will give you a diagnostic telegram right and what is external external diagnostics external diagnostics means if power cable of this slave is having a wire break or some back plane if you see some uh, siemens controller siemens io module there will be a back plane in the back side to connect the io modules sometimes this back plane will be having a loose connection this will also create a diagnostic telegram in the network and what is missing telegram missing telegram means the data packet is entirely missed in the network there is no response from the master or no response from the slaves these are these logical issues are completely dependent on the physical problems wherever you are lagging in the physical commissioning or physical standards this will affect for the logical issues in the network so these are the particular standard we have found out that has to be maintained and find in the network whether your network has a error telegram as a repeat telegram there should not be any this kind of errors in your network that's that's our that's what we do in the services and audits next video. so this is a just one example i wanted to add because when, I, when we visited a lot of plans for the audits and services we understood most of the end users are not doing the proper commissioning of this this type of repeaters if you see this is one of the two channel repeater you can see there is four ports here l1 l2 l3 l4 but l1 l2 is considered as a single segment and l3 l4 is considered as a segment 2 so what happened actually when in one of the plan they connected l1 to 20 nodes and l2 to other 18 nodes what uh, that that will give you almost 38 nodes right that is more than 32 nodes in a segment that created a delay in the network and their drives and conveyors were having a lot of intermittent failures then they couldn't find what's the issue so these are the small small uh, mistakes usually made by the end user so proper commissioning is this is a single segment and this is a single segment so you need to check that next guru can you tell me when do you need a repeater yeah that actually uh, in profibus network in rs485 if you check the like rs485 is completely physical layer so you can only communicate up to 32 nodes in a single segment 32 nodes in a single segment after 31 node you have to put a repeater because uh, rs485 uh, this energy is flowing so energy the voltage has to be pushed up after a particular segment or particular node it cannot extend beyond a limit so profibus international has tested it and find out like after 31 nodes you have to put a repeater is that okay thank you guru yeah next so this is one of the real time example you can see in the left side, left side image, the drive shielding was not perfect. Here in the right side image, after our commissioning, our, uh, we put it in a standard, the shielding was perfect. What will happen? As I already mentioned, I will explain once more what will happen if you put the shielding out. The shielding is done. If your shielding is out, what will happen? There will be noises. These noises will adapt to the profibus cable like there will be a lot of reflections in the network these reflections will not affect immediately for the intermittent failures or shutdown of your network but it will gradually gradually it will go for a failure of your drive like restart of your drive or maybe some weekly once or weekly twice you will be having a failure so this is a proper standard you have to maintain do while doing the shielding the metal contact has to touch the shield of profibus cable next so this is the second scenario so here we went to we did one of the audit in one of the pro one of the plywood industry 
so they have a lot of pressing machines you can see lot, lot of drives are there more than eight drives are there what they did is they commissioned with a very short stub that is very less than 30 centimeter but pi if you go to the pi standard what pi recommend is always use device to device connection more than one meter to avoid the inductance and capacitance effect because if you increase the cable length the capacitance will help reduce the inductance in the network that's why we recommended to use one meter rule between the drives you can see there is eight drives and that in between drives there is one meter cable here there was short steps very short steps this this created lot of impedance changes in the network impedance changes due to the inductance effect because cable length is very short and the emi effect is affecting the network that's created the impedance changes what happened when impedance changes as per standard profibus impedance is 150 ohms so whether the when the impedance changes the complete network or the complete network will go for a error or corruption in the logical side and it will gradually go for the intermittent failures in the drives so that's why we recommend to use one meter rule in complete network to reduce the emi this is a pa recommendation and you can get a stable network next oh from here one you can put the poll question guru Yes, I mean, sir. Samir, can you put the poll questions? Yeah. Yes, sure. Sure. So this is for the audience. Please provide your responses to this poll. I hope everyone has uh, provided the responses. Yeah. And it is still moving. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. That. So Guru, I'm closing the poll. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Can I start? Yeah. Guru will take it up. Uh, so just I will uh, go through two three questions uh, what the uh, clients have asked customers has asked so can I go we yeah. will answer three questions and move to the your part so one of the question is how many devices should be used to ensure proper communication with a speed of 187.5 kilobits per second sir uh, this baud rate is not dependent on the number of nodes the master is dependent on the number of nodes if you have a one profibus master card you can communicate to 127 devices but since it is a rs485 uh, you have to put repeaters after 31 nodes but since you are using 187.5 kilobits you can go up to 1200 meter if you have a better length but no dependency standard is same for profibus master that is that is not very according to the board rate Second question is, is it okay to lay profibus cable in an open tray 10 centimeter apart from 230 volt power cable? As I mentioned, profibus standard for laying cable along with the power cable is 30 centimeter. Otherwise, you have to use the RS485 intrinsic safety cables. Like in the DP itself, you will get a black color cable that is intrinsic safety that will avoid a lot of uh, EMI effects from the other sources. Oh, please repeat about diagnostic telegram. Okay, oh, guys, the diagnostic telegram is dependent on number of your nodes. Your nodes means your IO modules or your drives or your what's what your any modules, any slaves of your network. So what is diagnostic telegram is there is a two type of diagnostic telegram external diagnostics and internal diagnostics internal diagnostics means is there any wire break 
internal of your sensor. External diagnostic means if there is any uh, power supply break or if there is a loose connection in your IO module or backplane, backplane of your, if you see a Siemens uh, IO module as I mentioned, there will be a backplane, this backplane having a loose connection. These are, these create the external diagnostics. One more question. Distance or length of cable is important in deciding the number of nodes. But you are uh, TI rules in yeah, that is correct, sir. 32 nodes is the standard for maintaining in one segment. After 31 nodes, you have to put a repeater. Then again, you can go up to 31 device, and again you have to put one repeater. But the maximum number of nodes you can communicate to a profibus master is 127. So that cannot be changed. And uh, what will be the node address of the repeater or DPDP coupler? Repeater, there is no node address. Repeater is a, can not considered as a slave. So there will be a node, node address. But DPDP coupler will be having a node address. That, that, will, that is not standard. Usually we keep one. Uh, there is no standard. You can keep any number for the DPDP coupler. That is according to, there will be a switches, right? In the, if you consider a VIPA module or any other module, you can get the switches you can change the switch and put the address as as your communication guy as your programming guy is done again? yeah i think i think we can go go forward baki we uh, baki we will later discuss otherwise our time will be going up yeah. Yeah. Uh, best is uh, oh, you can also prepare an answer in this and then we can give it to them later yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Right. sure sir. Okay, Guru, uh, from here, Guru will be taking it up regarding how later we explained what is the physical problem, what is the logical problems in the Profibus network, right? So, how we are finding the problems, how we are isolating, how we are uh, like, how we are pointing out this is the exact problem in the network, or this cable length is having an issue, or your number of nodes in the network is having an issue, how we are finding it out. Guru will be explaining to Guru. Yeah, thank you, Angad. Uh, it's, uh, well done. Um, you explained about, I hope everyone is understand about the basics and technology in the Profibus uh, networks. Okay. The myself, Guru Kiran, I'm taking care of uh, industrial solution that including industrial IoT, OPC, and as well as the industrial network diagnostic solution, the Profibus and Profinet diagnostic solutions. Uh, the, let's let's talk about the profibus measurement and troubleshoot okay the because the profibus uh, the measurement and troubleshoot is a required because now is a profibus networks uh, the the edge networks or edge devices are there and profibus uh, earlier uh, the said by anger there is a problems in the physical and logical way the 90 percent of problems happening with the physical it may be the connectors or cable or it's not uh, done shielding properly or uh, this something either emc effect these type of problems are there the definitely the the uh, solution for this type of problem the using the tool okay in the profibus networks um, there is no because in the plc or scada uh, you, you you cannot get the uh, specific profibus parameters profibus problems and that is the overall problems are there the plc and scada is explaining you about the bus failure okay this this is a bus failure failure and this is the indication but in-depth evaluation is a required in the profibus okay the so what market says why measurement is important because the single measurement see the decreasing number of measuring insert the company total sales having risen the single measuring insert is more expensive because the measurement is too high. That is why the, the different different type of tools are available in the market. And uh, already said by Angad, this is like we are the partner with the Indosol GMDH. Indosol is a manufacturer of uh, industrial network diagnostic solutions. All industrial network diagnostic solutions as a Profibus, Profinet and other also. The CAN and RC uh, networks, Ethernet IP also. The first I explain about, uh, first, uh, let's go uh, forward with the tool. Uh, just I explain you the assessment and test of the field bus systems. 
okay uh, the individual in the profit bus network uh, based on the iec standards okay here the iec 61158 or iec 61784 and iec 6191.8 the based on these standards we are doing the assessment and testing of the profit bus networks okay the first i will talk about the uh, uh, the commissioning purpose because the profit bus uh, the uh, if you are planning the if your plan is perfect and the planning stage only you are eliminating the most of the problem then there is a the 90 or 60 70 percent of your problem is resolved in the profit bus networks it may you are not getting the frequently issues in the profit bus networks that is why i will introduce one tool here is a pbq1 devices okay the pbq1 the manufactured by the indosol uh, this is you can use for the maintenance commissioning uh, purpose okay this is called a signal quality testers okay what we can observe uh, from these tools uh, like uh, the noise reflection voltage drop the termination problem and wire break and configuration fault also this is you can identify through uh, these devices how you are measuring these devices okay uh, your both end the required the measurement is required both end at the beginning the stage it's like uh, you you need to connect in the master systems. Master is nothing but uh, PLC. And then you have to connect the end segment. If you've done segmentations, it means uh, you added repeaters after 31, the 32nd is your repeater. Then you have to measure your end segment should be the repeater. The next level of next steps of uh, measurement, you have to start from the repeater like that the from the beginning stage to uh, from the end stage if you monitor if you measure then you will get more uh, um, all the parameters and reliable uh, perfect uh, measurement from the profit bus networks uh, yeah uh, before uh, like the quality uh, the why you understand about the quality parameters okay why these quality parameters are goes down why these products are required okay because uh, the, there is no topology plan because uh, you don't know about the profit bus standards what i explained earlier is like uh, the similar cable if you are using the baud rate 9.6 kbbs or 12 mbbs if you are using 12 mbbs then your cable is, should be the 100 meters like that there is no proper topology plan and maybe the exceedance of uh, maximum number of 32 stations uh, like in the one copper segment uh, otherwise early said uh, you're using the less than one meter between the each devices when the if you're using vft there is a high consumption devices uh, your connections uh, between one meters these types of uh, non proper uh, like uh, you're not planned uh, uh, in the profit bus networks uh, then definitely you are facing the problems in the networks if you're using pbq1 devices you can identify uh, complete the quality test of the your profit bus network okay. the pbq1 device uh, this is a handy tool okay along with software that software uh, you need to install in your monitoring systems nothing but it's like P, uh, it's a laptop is a monitoring systems you can install in the laptop and then uh, you can get the overview of your networks now within a second within a second you can identify both uh, the logical and physical evaluation of uh, uh, systems okay now you install the software and you opened now, now you connected your pbq1 devices in the beginning uh, stage of the profit bus network nothing but in the plc now you got this type of the screen okay here uh, the bus physics uh, here the bus physics uh, showing the green the right indi indications the green color it means uh, your network is unstable there is no problem and uh, if you go to the yellow here if it show the yellow then is the insufficient quality values are there okay the, the that is not problem error but is, there is some insufficient quality values okay if it you if it is uh, continuous uh, showing the warning signal to you one day or very next second you will get the red mark okay red mark means it is a critical your bus devices failure it's a critical yeah, the immediately if you you can identify the baud rate what is the real time baud rate in the systems bus cycle time 
and number of master active systems and number of PLC, how many PLC are connected, how many passive uh, nodes are connected uh, to the slave. Okay. And even in the slaves that fail to respond, that is also the count, even uh, which is not configured to the uh, your master system. So, uh, maybe uh, if you have an electrical drawing, okay, in the electrical drawing, everything will be showing, okay, in the networks. But some of after the, uh, some updations or uh, in the network, uh, maybe some of devices is not configured, but you're not aware that configure, you know, which is not configured devices. If you connect PBQ1 devices, you can also identify how many devices are not configured to the uh, systems. Okay. Here, the quality values, okay. The quality values is showing it is the perfect quality values. You are working, you are working um, Profibus network, the stable networks are there. What is a, our quality value of the uh, stable Profibus networks. You can see uh, the oscilloscope mode is the, like the waveform of a Profibus network here. Okay, the the, uh, the perfect square wave that is called is your quality value is very good. Okay, and even in the bar graph, here in the bar graph, every devices, every address node and every each device is showing the uh, green color. It means uh, the your quality index value is of 5000 it means it's a 5 volt okay uh, for the successful profibus communication uh, what profibus international recommends and this is proven uh, proved by the measurement also is like is a voltage is greater than 2.2 volt if your um, um, device's voltage is greater than 2.2 volt then it will be the good quality index Okay, and slope must be the less than 5 by 16. Okay. Now we, we can we, we will move forward with the like what the problems are there. Like if you uh, installed a PBQ on devices, may you are in the maintenance activity or we may you are in the commissioning uh, or installation stage, you are checking your uh, system uh, before commissioning like like that. Okay, then how uh, you if you identify the problems how it will show in the pbq1 devices okay in the oscilloscope mode see the oscilloscope mode earlier i said is the complete square wave is a perfect profibus network stable profibus network now it's a little bit is like the glitches are there now harmonics are there some is a like um like uh planks are there in the in the uh in the waveform now what is the problems okay may see here it is a continuous of uh, glitches are there like it show it may show like a uh, reflection continue in the neighboring bit okay there is a neighboring your neighboring bit there is a continuous reflections are there that is a one of the uh, problems you can identify through the pbq1 devices or here it may like uh, uh, the too many terminations maybe the too many termination is on or uh, uh not powered termination these type of problems are there then uh, it should be the showing this type of waveform and also the traffic signal from the each node like here like uh, the address number 71 address number 72 73 74 apart from 75 remaining all are showing in the below quality values okay uh, let's first i will talk about the quality values i said it is a 2.2 volt it means like it's a 2200 or 2500 quality index it's above that it will be good okay normally uh, it's a new project or it is a project in the commissioning stage your quality index should be around 4000 value it means the 4 volt it's like 4000 value your quality index should be there uh, sometime even you are running with a thousand quality index there is no problem in the systems but even still it's a running but what happens there is a noise immunity is a very low if the noise immunity is very low then it's continuously happens then it may be your bus device failure one day okay that is why the bar graph are clearly showing it's a, your quality index it should be always above this red uh, a line okay 
in depth okay now you are going to in depth about the pinpointing the error now you done you identify the error and you identify which slave is not responding which slave is a failure and what type of the uh, problems i faced and you checked with the shielding everything now you are pinpointing the errors like uh, the wire a and wire b is a completely you are pinpointing the error of your uh, profi bus networks because here you can see it is like uh, the noise level should be uh, less than 150 millivolt okay that, that is like normally the noise level uh, should be less than 150 millivolt or it's uh, preferable is a 75 millivolt as a pa and bias should be less than 50 millivolt because the differences between the top and bottom signal always should be less than 50 millivolt one of the uh, uh, big advantage of this product you can get the automatic architectures okay uh, you, i said it is the most of uh, profibus networks are uh, like 10 years old 15 years old okay may they have don't have the proper architecture the real time architectures okay when you installed and when you measured both end of the profibus network then you will get the automatic architectures with the cable uh, Uh, the distance of the uh, cable length with the cable length you will get the completely automatic topology of the uh, networks the one more uh, advantage of this networks uh, maybe in the installation uh, if i said the commissioning engineer engineers uh, is that you can uh, there is a integrated master simulations are the, also there because without plc you can also measure or in the commissioning stage you can also measure your profibus health conditions profibus uh, uh, slave uh, devices you can measure without plc when the commissioning stage you can measure in them it is mainly of uh, this uh, pbq1 devices gives you you the edge steepness and differential voltage and uh, transient response this is the main you can identify Uh, by the pbq1 devices and also you, you can make the report uh, completely the signal quality report also you can download in the pdf or uh, in the this is architecture also you can download uh, the this is a very helpful because uh, the most of uh, what are, we understand what is a uh, the, the, the most of our measurement services uh, the plants are not having the proper architectures that is a one of the main reasons uh, they do not able to trouble shoot the networks they don't have the proper proper architecture real time architectures um, that is why uh, if the if you are using the pbq1 devices um, you can get everything in the single shot is like everything in the fraction of seconds you can measure quality parameters and you will get the uh, report and you will get the automatic architectures the most of uh, like uh, uh, this pbq1 devices as well as uh, like integrated oscilloscope uh, uh, maybe you can identify the emc the signal shape and emc uh, the uh, the angle set the reflection the, uh, the reflection is uh, too high we we need to do the termination in the networks because if you are not doing the terminations uh, then reflection is too high okay if it is a reflection is too high there is a one of the it may cause your profibus networks uh, that is why uh, this e reflection report also you can identify you can uh, measure through the pbq1 device device the next the next step is like um, um uh, like the profibus cable parameters the most of the profibus uh, identified uh, like problems identified to the uh, physical physical means you can visible you can visible maybe it is a short circuit maybe it is a like a, um, cable problem you are not using the proper connector okay uh, the termination problem these types of the problems are there for this also cable parameter identifying the cable uh, we have also unique tool because the indosol have uh, only the tool to identify the cable parameters there is no other tool in across flow Uh, there is no other manufacturer for the identifying the cable okay this is a display based uh, devices uh, 
the normally we are taking the offline okay you can use in the your maintenance activities or you can use in the your, uh, the commissioning uh, uh, stage also the main uh, uh, main measurement what you are measured from the this uh, cable uh, uh, para, uh, devices the cable tester okay one is like impedance line impedance and line length okay if you go to the steel industry cement industry or the, uh, the some of uh, the where the critical systems are there uh, you don't know the cable length and you cannot uh, measure also because the cables are uh, like in like uh, everywhere is a hundred meter cable sometimes it's a one kilometers cable like that there okay if it is any cable breaks okay what happens you have to do the manually that is a double work and you, can, you cannot it may take time or uh, like is a one week or one month also it may, may take time to identify the cable break if you do the manually okay then using of these devices okay in the both end okay you can uh, at the beginning stage and at the uh, end stage if you measured with the uh, these devices you can get the exact cable break if you are using the 100 meter cable the cable break maybe happens in the 57 meter okay uh, then um, it's like it's exactly you can showcase it showcase in the display in the 57 meter it the cable break happens We have uh, another five more minutes. Quickly, uh, and uh, open for questions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because uh, this is also all stored. Uh, all result you can store in the devices, uh, and it, it 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 can and can be printed out via PC. That is also you can do it through these devices. The main thing, uh, like one is a uh, impedance. The cable impedance already the explained by Angad. Like one fifty ohm is a standard the impedance if is there is any changes in the 150 ohm so like normally i will uh, first i will tell you the cable parameters normally in the profibus cable parameters is like uh, the uh, impedance should be the 135 uh, to 165 ohms the frequency should be 3 to 20 megahertz and cable capacity should be less than always is the less than 30 picofarad and the resistance is the less than always 110 ohm per kilometer so and the signal activations if you are using over uh, the total length what is your signal attenuation is the maximum is a 9 db this is the standards for the uh, profibus cables if there is any problems in this uh, cable you can identify through these devices how you are doing the testing for uh, uh, these devices always you have to take three tests main one is like um, uh, without the plc the normally with the, without plc you can take uh, and second one is a uh, without terminating re resistors. Third is a uh, like with the terminating resistors because uh, some test is uh, based on the references of the your preceding test. That is why these three tests compulsory you have to do for your uh, identifying the exact error or pinpointing the error in the profibus network. Like it is, I will uh, explain you two tests here like one is a test without uh, with no terminations so without terminating resistors how you can you can identify if it is like uh, no error will, it will come in the display of uh, cable testers uh, may maybe the impedance is not detected maybe the cable length uh, uh, for the impedance measurement is may short okay uh, or it is a it's like error it's detected error so you got error okay then what happens um, maybe the no length is not measured either it is a too short or uh, for the length measurement or there is no cable is connected okay when you are testing with the no terminating resistors otherwise one more error maybe the low ohmic resistance there is a short circuit okay there is a wire a and b there is a short circuit this type of the error you can identify through with the uh, without terminating resistor with the terminating resistors, uh, like uh, the two wire, uh, maybe A and maybe B is a twisted, or is a like the bus terminal, maybe the without power supply, or you can connected wrongly bus terminal, 
this type of, uh, this type of error you can identify in the new second stage of uh, like the next level of when you are using the with termination testing okay uh, yeah uh, the, these two products uh, mostly uh, are useful for the uh, like uh, the profi bus quality test the quality test is a must uh, like uh, uh, if you are doing the mind every 15 days you, if you are doing the maintenance activities uh, or you are the service engineers or you are in the project department uh, and uh, if you, the initial in the planning stage you need to check your uh, uh, profit bus network these two these two tool is uh, very helpful and you can use and you can identify the uh, complete overview of your profit bus health conditions in the pbq one uh, uh, maybe the, uh, the like uh, the, uh, there is a problems relating to the termination termination of the middle okay uh, the overall uh, profit bus uh, is a 0 to the 126 uh, maybe the uh, uh, 1 2 3 is maybe the your master addresses uh, the remaining the 4 to the 124 is our slave addresses uh, and you completely you used 124 addresses it may like you need to do the four segment it means 31 then you added repeater to the improve your signal quality then again 64 then again you are added the repeater then you done the four segment and if it, this is the complete uh, the big networks the critical networks of the profit bus networks then you are now measuring through the pbq1 devices okay uh, based on the our profit measurement services uh, like uh, one is a cable break wire break or shielding termination problem this is all we identified and also we identified uh, like uh, there is a one high contact resistance this is also causing high contact resistance also causing your uh, the profit bus um, network failure or is a problems relating to the termination at the middle you can ask like i can i will measure uh, at the uh, beginning and end if it is a termination problem in the, at the middle okay what i can do uh, like uh, these problems uh, look almost uh, like a cable break okay if you uh, identified the termination at the middle okay uh, the problems relating to termination at the middle it looks like almost like a cable break at a first glance but uh, the quality index is better if uh, the when open the software the but quality index is showing the better okay in this case what you can do like um, Uh, what we can do right it is like uh, in the middle the uh, additionally the test is uh, required in the middle of the bus okay now you can identify the termination resistors switch wrong the station like that you can uh, you can uh, measure in the middle of the uh, bus uh, you can identify exact error in the profit bus network Now moving forward, the more advanced solution in the Profibus network. Okay, what is a more advanced solutions? We know is like the tester, the handy tool. Uh, you can measure because that is after the breakdown. You can measure with the handy tool. But uh, the question arises: the before breakdown. I need predictive maintenance, like it's a warning before fail, uh, like uh, warning before failure. What is it? Is there any tool is available for the warning before failure? The like uh, you said, the logical problems are there. The most of um, telegram analysis, like error telegrams, repeat telegrams. These type of logical problems are there. Uh, uh, then there is any tool for that for the identifying the logical uh, problems? Um, yeah, definitely, we have a tool uh, like uh, the Intosol is manufactured inspector. Okay, this is a tool for the inspector. Uh, you can um, um, identify all logical problems and you will get the warning before failure of your networks okay uh, normally uh, uh, this tool is uh, like continuous monitoring uh, the if you get warning before failure you need to install this tool is like uh, 24 bar 7 is a continuous monitoring in the uh, nearby your master system okay you can see here the uh, complete uh, uh, connection of your uh, uh, the master systems is the like inspector like in the inspector uh, there is no additional software is required 
to read out the data from inspector okay by entering the ip address of the inspector in the browser command line maybe if it is a the monitoring system in the laptop you can open um, any browser like google chrome or any uh, the internet explorer and the you can the factory set configuration ip addresses are there just enter that factory set configuration ip addresses so that is uh, the called 198 dot 168 212 or 211 this is a factory set configuration ip, IP address given by the windows or just enter these ip addresses in the uh, your browser command line then uh, you can get the both uh, current condition of your network and history of the past event uh, can be seen the more about what i can say it's a, like it's a permanent monitoring solution so if it is get the continuous monitoring today you are not in the premises in your premises but you you can identify what happens in my premises why my slave is not responding maybe how many warnings i got or how many error how many error i got the maximum 2000 alarms you can store here uh, in the um, profibus inspector then you can acknowledge then you can get the uh, the new errors you can store it to the uh, profibus inspector Guru, I think you have uh, two, three slides more. Quickly, you can browse through and uh, close. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, uh, I said it, there is a factory set configuration IP addresses are there. How you can identify the uh, this one? Just open Google from now entered IP address. Now you get the uh, overview of your Profibus network. You get this screen uh, to the Profibus networks. Now, the error free since four hours. It means the past four hours, there is no deviations maybe there is no errors problem happens there is no repeat telegram there is no multiple times of repetition is not happens master sent to the message to the slave slave is perfectly responded okay and you you can get it is like uh, the uh, the real time uh, device connection of the devices and every milliseconds here is like every milliseconds there is updation of your network status okay is like uh, the yellow mark is uh, like the warning uh, maybe you are not troubleshooted your network when you got warning then it goes failure then you then you troubleshoot it now it is your network is good okay and also the alarms are showing is a 45 the 45 uh, the problems are occurred so continuously in your networks okay this is all network overview what i said is the error telegrams and maybe the uh, like um, uh, the repeat telegrams okay breakdowns how many times my systems are restarted and internal diagnostic maybe the external diagnostics maybe the external diagnostic it means uh, like the wire break like that is the external diagnostics uh, maybe you can identify for the last minute and how many times it happens even history also you can store The, now as so a moving forward with the inspector uh, now everyone wants to do the centralized monitoring now in the industry 4.0 everyone talks about the industry 4.0 the every the plant the, whatever the shop floor activities i need to get the the remote locations okay um, uh, then you can you can move forward with our software that is a pro minus soft, software okay uh, this inspector every master systems require the one inspectors every one masters one inspector means one network segment required one uh, inspectors like that if in, in your premises you have five or ten master systems okay in the profi bus now you, if you are using these softwares okay you can uh, combining you can get the overview of all networks in the remote locations uh, either you can your management also can see uh, what happens in our shop floors and why our networks of productions are not going good why every time is the system is getting failure this type of informations you can get uh, through and uh, one more things uh, like you can integrate it with the scada uh, uh, scada also the existing systems now you have a hmr like you said it's a, the laptop is a taking laptop also it's a very difficult uh, to the premises then you can integrate it with your hmi available monitoring systems in the uh, production line or you can integrate it with the scada uh, over rj45 
like um, there is a like a standard reporting options like uh, the potential free switching contact and you can do snnp trap uh, for example if you are using the pro manage you can use the snnp trap like that you can uh, integrate it with your existing uh, system yeah uh, now uh, the multi repeaters uh, are more efficient than the repeater in the line structure so you understand the why repeater is a uh, must or why repeater is a required in the uh, profibus networks uh, we have an advanced repeater that is like multi repeaters like the uh, maybe the two channel five channel and seven channel repeaters we have uh, um, um, in, in our basket like if you are using multi repeater what is the advantages you will get Uh, because uh, you know right uh, the uh, early you understand that uh, the uh, segmenting with repeater is necessary because cable if the cable length exceeds uh, or uh, with the uh, versus with the speed and baud rate of uh, your networks okay uh, uh, the same same thing is said like uh, the for the person is using uh, uh, some baud rate and the uh, cable length should be exceed is a 12 mbps but here he is using 200 meter cable in the single line maybe the repeater the required mm. and uh, the eliminating the impedance leap uh, that is why the uh, uh, the repeater is required and the regeneration of the signal in the amplitude and in, in the time uh, you need the repeater okay uh, but i am talking about here the multi repeaters multi repeater is a like uh, allow the star shaped structure like is like a, as if uh, stops are branching off like it's a backbone as in the profinet or ethernet okay uh, you can use uh, like the multi repeater in addition uh, like they you can remove or uh, you can self removal or addition of the uh, devices in the during the operations so here you can see the five cha five channel repeater okay the five different channel if may affected any one of the segment it is not uh, um affected to the other line okay maybe the, the second channel will working fine or five, uh, fifth channel is working fine it will only uh, problem in the showcasing the uh, fourth channel okay because these repeaters are the galvanically isolated galvanically isolated means there is no internal current conduction path okay this is a multi repeaters are galvanically isolated in the normally normal repeaters in the you are not it is not the galvanically isolated repeater okay. it is also it is a diagnostic uh, maybe the, 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 it is also this multi repeater is also the giving the diagnostic information like uh, the affected segment uh, maybe the error locations um, uh, distance of uh, error uh, uh, location is a type of errors um, uh, these types of uh, diagnostics information also you can uh, get through the this repeaters Guru, we can move on and close. Okay. okay. Another two slides is there. Okay. Yeah. Now is like the EMC. EMC is a one of the uh, hot topic in the profi bus. Okay. Uh, non normally the shield current there is a uh, four types of there. One is the zero uh, milli ampere. This is a official value of the EMC, and then up to ten milli ampere. This is a typical value, and above forty milli amps. is additional measure need to taken for the equipotential bonding and then uh, is a 150 is a maximum electrical connectivity and we have also tool uh, for that it is like the uh, emc check the every in the initial uh, the commissioning stage or the planning stage emc check should be required or if your networks is a more than 5 uh, years or more than 3 years networks you have then emc uh, uh, measurement is necessary now is the like uh, the overall uh, uh, about the profibus ne networks okay you understand is a profibus is a one cable and two wire communications and uh, two wire uh, communication and it is a master and slave communications the address is 0 to 125 and is a line topology and uh, there is a termination is required okay and the normally 150 ohm is a both end terminations and 
the measurement measurement point and one more important thing in the profit bus like if you are the measurement points always the what we see in the uh, profit bus there is no uh, much of measurement points uh, if you go to the industry there is no measurement point in the profit bus networks at the beginning maybe at the end or middle there is no measuring point that is a measuring point is required in the profit bus networks a small example about the profit bus uh, uh, communication here okay is like um, um, the pro the profit bus is a send and response uh, one at one slave 100 slaves okay but here you got the failure in the slave number uh, um, 3 okay what happens the, uh, the maybe the cable impedance or it is like uh, uh, maybe maybe there's some other wire break or other problems happens in the uh, this one but what happens you requested the data from the 101 okay but the slave number 3 is a failure happen but you you don't know it is the slave number 3 is a uh, failure because 101 is not responding here you thought it is a 101 is a problem okay then you can use uh, inspector or pbq and devices then you can identify which nodes are exactly failure happens the overall conclusion of our uh, uh, the, the the networks the measurement the uh, in the profit bus is a most of physical problem that is why the measurement is a must and if you done proper maintenance activity or proper measurement um that would be the uh, maintain uh, you can maintain your uh, stable network okay this can be achieved by the good advanced planning of the networks high quality installations and uh, like um, um, continuous production there is no frequent problems in the uh, profit bus networks yeah thank you uh, if you have any questions regarding about the measurement uh, you can ask uh, and like um, uh, uh, the I, I understand the most of uh, people's uh, uh, the experience to be the measurement tool or not I don't know um, that is why the, uh, Samir can you put the poll questions sure yeah, yeah thank you Guru. I think Professor Ashish is quite uh, you want to go for the poll right yeah uh, we have just started the poll please provide your responses to it And what kind of certification you give after the, you attend this kind of training, uh, Samir? Uh, sir, we are looking at uh, uh, one email certificate. So, uh, you know, okay. in the forthcoming week, we will inform the, all the attendees about it. Okay. And uh, that is a kind of certificate from PA kind of uh, authorized? No. Uh, Not no. like that, sir. It will be a Uthunga certified. Uh, that you, you had uh, uh, you know, attended Uthunga's webinar uh, on Profibus network diagnostics, like that. Okay. Right. Not about uh, the webinar certificate. I'm asking about the training certificate. If in, in yeah. case uh, the, the okay. certain training, so what kind of certificate do you lock? Uh, that I think Guru or Anand can answer better. Yeah, uh, we, we as a PA uh, center, Profibus Competence Center, we are educating to the industry people or uh, who wants to learn about the Profibus or Profinet training. We will do the training on, in your premises or in a, if it is our, our, uh, in our offices also. We are, we are doing the hands-on experience with the Profibus training. Okay, the Uttunga is a we are giving the Uttunga certification. Uh, okay, in the uh, if you've done by Uttunga, then if you need from the PA certifications, okay, if you need the PA certification training, then we will call our uh, partner Indosol, the German person, they will do the training and they will uh, uh, give the PA certifications. Okay, that will be the, uh, the price too high about the PA certification training. Yeah, we have yeah, closed the poll, sir, for now. Yeah. Can yeah. we open the uh, forum for uh, questions? I will ask one, Mr. Ashish. 